Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. The wrestling podcast will review every segment of Raw and give you guys the wrestling news of the week and answer a myriad of fan questions. That's going to have to be the new intro because we're getting tons of them each week and we fucking love it. It's going to be stacking up now. <laughs> that's it, that's it. And if there is an address or a name maybe that you would post those questions to, it would be to one of the hosts of this podcast, and that name is Turbo Tony. That is my name. How many times can I come up with different ways for people to say my name? Who knows? We're on episode 61, so... Uh, we're Still going fun. strong. That's it. And uh, we're here, here. We're here, here. We're here with the man who often says, Tony! Get the tables! It's Matty Ray Dudley. <laughs> it's just, just going to be in so many ways as like, how could I introduce myself as to how many ways are you going to introduce me? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people but might, I, I like Matty Ray. Yeah, Matty Ray's good, yeah. People may, may remember, I mean, I don't know if we have any fans back when we were like testing this out like years ago. I don't know mm. if anyone's like that. And I used to like do loads of really creative stuff with your name and now I'm just like, oh, it's wrestler names that's fine just uh, stuff i might have to go back to that eventually once we've run out of wrestlers so just get it that way <laughs> how are you doing that yeah pretty good man just uh getting by you know yeah exactly <laughs> yeah for, for people that, that obviously listened to last week and matt flew over to come see me in ireland he's now gone back uh we're in floods of manly tears you know as uh, uh you know as bromans do you know this is the way it's the bro- that's it or, you know tna reference there um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're back to our usual routine, uh, in regards to doing the podcast, and we're very glad to be doing that there. Uh, I do apologise for any change in the audio quality. We had, like, a huge, like, audio mishap, and we had to record via a really awkward mic. So, uh, but it's all back to, all back to you. That's probably. it. It's all running. If you want to realise what the heat is going on on Twitter when it regards to Paul Heyman retweeting Matt's tweets, then you must... Follow our Twitter account at Talk Wrestle Pod is the handle. Go follow us on Twitter, and Matt will uh, tweet you to his heart's content uh, as he as, as he does. Uh, and also a little bit of news before we uh, start up with the show, and I announce all the things that we've got planned for you. It's going to be a big ass show for you guys there this week. Uh, we uh, we actually had like a uh, an interview. Uh, like a Q and A session that was done um, for a, um, a a wrestling blog by one of the people that listened to the show, mm-hmm. um, Wrestling Boom um, uh, dot blogspot dot com. I'll put the link of it there. Um, and uh, we did an interview there in regards to some interesting questions: how we would we book WrestleMania Thirty One? Um, you know, in, in regards to you know what matches go where and um, what is our favourite promotion, that sort of stuff. Uh, so if you guys are very inclined to go and what, um, look at some um, some discussions, everything that's more TNA based. I know he's, he's very much into TNA. I know we don't cover it that much on his show. Then follow it in there. The link will be in the description, and you can catch out our uh, our answers to the questions there as well. That's it. Which we did enjoy. Um, so pack show. What have we got there for you this week? We have basically no wrestling news i um the majority of the news is stuff that we're going to cover throughout the show anyway uh, i don't like oh here's the news and then we reference it tons of times throughout the episode we don't like to do what raw does and tell you what happened at the start of our yeah. show remember what happened earlier yeah. <laughs> I mean, half an hour ago yeah. yeah earlier we'll have the same discussion again you know that's the way we, that's the way that we go forward uh, but we've got a hefty fan feedback from you guys you guys are loving leaving us the messages and tell you what we're loving giving you those damn answers that's the way that we love doing it uh, we also got our fail of the week as you guys do love we are going to reference the triple h um uh, appearance on stone cold's podcast after raw and then we've got our raw review and i have got some choice words to speak about this week's raw i was duped to begin to be thinking that this was a good raw and some of it was good but i would state that part of it was absolutely utterly horrific and i'm guessing people will understand what point of raw i will be talking about and uh, but we'll we'll go into that there as well. Uh, so you ready, Matt? You ready to answer some fan questions? You have no idea. You haven't had time to check the fan questions this week. No, I haven't had anything. Uh, okay. Are you ready? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Okay. Dun. Um, so 
fan feedback. Let's get it going. We've got um, Manrikki Tobacco One asks us, and this is a uh, an interesting question. This one, especially the, for those, uh, in, you know, it's kind of links to a show that you can probably go back and watch on the network. Um, what if John Morrison? Got injured instead of Joey Mercury at the Armageddon 2006 pay-per-view. Mercury was released in March 07 following the injury. Do you think uh, Mercury would have gotten the same treatment Morrison did in regards to, you know, the ECW title win, you know? The titles he would go on to win after he had IC t- title wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff as well. He's like single success. Sort yeah, of single thing. success. Yeah, I'd pretty much so. Uh, you know, uh, w- uh, in, in, the opposite, in the opposite, if Morrison was in that, would you think Morrison have got released also? Now... Here's my um, answer to that, and I would um, advise that if you're interested in this question, you may actually want to go and watch the CM Punk documentary on the network, or people may have bought it. It was a really good documentary. Um, was it called the Best in the World documentary? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was. Um, he actually, Joe Mercury, talks a lot on that about his um, personal demons and how CM Punk helped him um, throughout that time. And it was yeah. around about this time that all that stuff started coming to a head. So... We'll break this down. Um, do <clears throat> if John Morrison had got injured instead of Joey Mercury, would Joey Mercury gone and done better? No, you wouldn't have gone and got the single um, success. Like I said, all those personal demons, uh, the financial issues that the man was in wasn't great either um, at that time. And WWE were trying to wash their hands of anyone that was uh, bringing bad stain onto their reputation. You know? That's it. Um, and also, just being blunt, as much as I do like Mercury, he wasn't—he didn't have the look that Morrison did. He didn't have the in-ring spectacular high fly, all that other stuff that that John Morrison could do. So you actually take him outside of that tag team, and he looks like a very ordinary wrestler. So yeah. w- would he have been pushed to become a single star? No, no, no I don't think so. Uh, I think the other thing is this. I think it was when he got injured that then the sort of everyone like, oh, he's got all of these problems. It just got worse for him, didn't it? And it got worse, yeah. yeah. But I think if it was just to have carried on and he sort of continued as a singles guy, um, if he hadn't been injured, I think just further down the line, the cracks would have formed and he'd have still sort of fallen into his dark place regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some people might argue that you know, maybe him not working and being injured kind of drove him further on along those lines. Yeah, possibly, but you know what? It's all at a mute point because you look at the guy now and he's doing great work um, in his current role. I mean, he's been an agent in WWE for a long time. Yep. Um, he's been working for them, uh, obviously in a much better place. Uh, he obviously owes a lot to Punk. You know, <laughs> he's in J and J Security. Yeah, but you know, he's involved. You know, he was the agent for the Shield for all their entire yep. run. You know, they referenced him as being like the hidden fourth member of the shield which mm-hmm. is great and he's working with them now so he's obviously in a much better place so i always think that that do you role... know one downside though do you know he's responsible for the booking of the royal rumble yeah i heard that apparently him and Jimmy like, uh... had their, their hands dipped in that it's i i don't agree with that per se i mean they're still being used as scapegoats at the end of the day one person makes all the decisions and that's vinnie mac yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and i will place the blame on him all the time. as mentioned in the podcast yeah exactly yeah. we'll get on that yeah uh, so yeah, the the blunt question is no. I wouldn't see him become a success if Morrison got injured. Yeah, maybe it would have stunted his growth, but he was better off than Mercury. But he was never going to be a world champion. He just didn't have any charisma, really. Um, he suffered so, from what I like to call Kofi Kingston syndrome. Whereas you are fantastic in the ring, but boring as a painter. But with a mic in the hand, nah. Yeah, he just absolutely boring to watch out when when he's not in the ring um and you know for all the talk we have here of we want in-ring action yeah well we do want in-ring action but part of that as well is being able to sell a feud and yeah sure we watched why and ambrose kill each other and we were just like uh, well where's the story behind but the why <laughs> yeah, those those two guys are good on the mic if they, if they can't do something with two guys that are good on the mic what hope do you have when you're not good on the mic yeah um so yeah morrison was a little bit better i know he's doing good work with lucha underground that's probably the best place for him um, but no, I don't see Mercury getting getting much further than that. Uh, so we move on to Obi Wan Jabroni. Still love that name. Uh, asks if we have tried the new WWE Immortals game. And I have a shocker of a question here, of an answer here. Believe it or not, I don't really use a mobile phone. No. I should. I know I should probably be 
you know, psychologically tested or like, you know, researched as an I was anomaly. Say, and, you, and you say I exist within the patterns of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it, the fact is, I've, uh, I, I think the, um, the main reason I don't use a phone is because I very, really, leave, very rarely leave my house. You know, my, my leg problems. I've been honest about that all the way through. Um, the one thing I saw about it, I know you have played it, Matt. Yep. And the one thing I said to you, and you said, ah, yeah, pretty much, is that it looked like a reskin of Injustice God, Gods Among Us, which was a game made by the same developers, you know. Yes. M- Mortal Kombat fame and all that lot. Yeah. Um, go on, tell me about it. Is, is it. is it good? You've played it. It's exactly the same. Like, if you got the Injustice game, because they released the Injustice game as a mobile game, as mobile as well. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly the same thing. Oh, okay. Just it's really like right. it still operates in the same way. If you want to do some special moves, you've got to swipe quickly, or if you want, you've got to tap frantically in a certain spot. But it's like, oh, we just took Superman and we changed his face and swapped it with John Cena. Oh, okay. Um, so it plays exactly the same way. Like it literally is <clears throat> a rehash of the special attacks and the skins. Yeah, and that's about it. I think the actual backgrounds are the exact same as well. Oh, okay. Well, you know, at the end of the day, though, I mean, there's worse games that you could paste over. And it's a free game, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. There's uh, worse games I could pay for, so... Yeah, yeah. So you can't really argue about it too much. I'm sure some people would would find it fun. And like I said, some people, as long as it doesn't have microtransactions shoved up its butt then it should, it should be... Okay. It's, it's got them, but it's you not... You don't have to use them. Yeah, it's not fundamental. I feel like we, 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 we're sifting into our gaming podcast chat now, so uh, we might have to go back into wrestling now. Yeah, drag it back. <laughs> drag it back. Uh, yeah, but like I said, it looks good, and they've been pushing it really hard. Uh, fair enough. That's that's pretty much all I said. But yeah, shocker. I don't use a mobile phone. That's, that's, me- that's mental to most people. I am looked at like I am like the country bumpkin. Whenever anyone you know talks to me and like, oh, what's your phone number? Here's my wife's phone number because I yeah, just don't use my over. home number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Bazooka Majin asks us which of the schoolboy roll-up pins is the most devastating of all time, and this is a really easy question. All of them. The move is that damn powerful. Doesn't matter. All of them are that powerful. It's the way it is. Use a roll-up pin. Bam. Victory. It's done done yeah Whew. i tell you what if they if they ever come to a standstill to major countries you know maybe russia america you know are really hotly debated politically all obama needs to do is just roll up vladimir putin for a three count <laughs> done all right all over um robert chapman asks if uh, daniel bryan wins at fast lane won't it be as if the royal rumble match was a gigantic waste of everyone's time and I would state, yeah, you're completely right. That's why he's not winning at fast. That's it. That's why he's not going to happen. He definitely, I, I would bet a lot on him n- not even have a chance of winning that match. They want Reigns against Lesnar. <clears throat> That's it. And this is a way of them trying to deviate some of the negative reaction that Reigns has got. And to a point, it's actually kind of working. So, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see when that when that when that comes up to it. He also asks, uh, does it matter who beats Brock for the belt, as Rollins will, you know, eventually cash in regardless? It's actually coming up to, like, a year, quite close to a year having him having that belt soon, you know? Yeah, that is true. Um, having the briefcase, sorry. Uh, I do say it does matter, because beating Lesnar at the main event of WrestleMania is a talking point. You look at how much Chris Jericho flaunted, uh, I beat The Rock and Austin on the same night. How much yeah. Daniel Bryan will definitely lord over the fact that he beat Triple H, Randy Orton, and Batista all in the same night. Being able to spout, I beat Brock Lesnar for the World Championship. At uh, WrestleMania. At WrestleMania. Is an accomplishment. Even if he gets cashed in on immediately afterwards, that's still an accomplishment to, to have notched onto your belt. It. It's something else that can sell that you can sell. And I would I would argue that while a lot of the negativity is towards Reigns, Reigns needs that selling point more than Brian does. Brian yeah. had his big moment. But, uh, uh, I'll leave that down to people to decide. Uh, he also asks us as well, full of questions here, uh, which is the greatest catchphrase of all time? I, I'm i a fan of Flair's to be the man, you've got to beat the man. I do yeah. like that catchphrase. Uh, however, in terms of fan reaction and involvement and in terms of just always getting a pop, you could pretty much go through the entire Rock's playbook. He's got like five or six 
at this point. Cool, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got finally... The millions. Uh, the millions, yeah. Well, even just pretty much his whole opening segment <laughs> yeah, is whole one thing. long crowd interaction. Yeah. Um, but you know, most talent would kill for one line that got the, any sort of response. Rock has about five or six that gets not only a, a, a response, but a big response. Um, yeah. So anyone would kill for that. But yeah, I'm a fan of Flair. Oh, Stone Cold's what? Oh, I hate that. I hate that chant. Look, you hate it nowadays. Ugh, I wasn't a fan of it back then, to be honest. It's, it, you got to admit, no. it's big in the crowd. I, I don't give a shit. I hate that fucking thing. I really, <laughs> I really do. But that's down. That's down. Go, like what? So cu- even now, current what crowd interaction responses? See, I wouldn't even catch um, the yes as a catchphrase per se, isn't it? It's more of a chant. Yeah. Um, Oops. <laughs> it's kind of, the kind of thing that we're plucking out of straws at the moment just makes me think that or oh, considering the, the fact that the crowd generally goes along with it ladies and gentlemen my name is Paul <laughs> yeah. well that is a catchphrase I'd say because he always says it doesn't he and the crowd go with it yeah yeah. Um, but yeah it's a little bit of a shame now that the that, that whole thing has kind of died off I remember Austin you know Austin 316 says I just kicked your ass he didn't use that often but just him saying that like launched a lot a large part of his career yeah um it's just a shame that more lines like that now doesn't really get the fans right up and it isn't particularly the talent's fault it's more along the lines of wrestling fans are more jaded nowadays i admit it yeah, i'm jaded but that's the way it is. yeah so what would you go with as greatest i'm going with to be the man to be, um you have to beat the man <laughs> i love that catchphrase but it is really good um it's got to be Flair again, though. Yeah, yeah. It's it's got it's got that whole jet flying pro limousine riding like that yeah. whole spiel. He had a, he had a good a good vocabulary, didn't he? A good yeah. Um, and he's one of the best talkers around back in his heyday, Rick Flair. Maybe doesn't get the uh, props. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, probably because he was <laughs> he was so good in the ring, people forgot how good he could be in terms of on a on a mic. He was very very good. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Thomas Miller uh, says that he would have liked to have seen an empty arena match. You alluded that last week there. I right? did. Uh, he's a man after your own heart there, you know, Mr. Miller. Um, that would be a cool wrestling name, Mr. Miller. Like, you seem like a smooth pimp daddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or IRS's assistant. <laughs> Mr. Miller, yeah. I, you can go either way. See, it's it's got. It's what got you need to do is fill out a P forty seven six and go see Mister Miller. <laughs> He'll meet you in the ring. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, Just HR, the HR department. You can file a complaint <laughs> with Mister Miller. There you go. We've given you a gimmick. Sorry, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Done. Gimmick. There you go. Um, so yeah, um, he he asks when will we start a booking raw. And all joking aside, me and Matt never going to book Raw, realistically, obviously. Um, and personally, I would hate to book Raw. I was talking to you, Matt, before um, you left about, oh, you know, realistically, would you like to be part of the creative team? Me, it's a resounding no. I'd hate yeah. to be part of the creative team. And it's not so much like, oh, I don't want to be associated with them. No, it's down to my own um, choice. Uh, while we slam the creative team, and rightly so, for coming up with a lot of stuff that they do, I would in no way want the pressure of writing over five hours of television on a weekly basis. Yeah. That would be hell. And I, I imagine I'd get burnt out pretty quick. And when you get burnt out, you tend to make a lot of mistakes. And that's when they start to crop up in the way that they do. And then you have to deal with the fact that you've got Vince McMahon's constant mood swings. He wants this person, person pushed this person pushed this person pushed this person yeah. pushed not to mention they will constantly just be breathing down your neck yeah exactly so yeah it's um yeah i i wouldn't like to to be booking raw what about you Matt? would you like to book raw would you like to at least give it a go it's just it's like i said with you with you though it's just like book raw what like the entirety of it or you've got half an hour you've got these two people fill it Oh yeah, well, so you, you'd like not so much to write the entire show, but to write a rivalry or something like that. Yeah. Okay, I get that. Uh, fair enough. Maybe in the same capacity, I, I would enjoy doing that. 
Uh, but the very idea of just being involved in sometimes in some weeks over eight hours of television. Um, yeah. That to me, mm, no, that doesn't sound appealing. That's me. it. It's like we could book Raw, but then that also means we'd have to book SmackDown as well. Mm, yeah. And then you've got to, you know, you've got the pay per views at that point. You have to plan in advance, which is something they don't do. You might have to re, you might write something, you might be really proud of Vince McMahon decides, I don't want that person pushed. Change what you've written and you've got to rewrite everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Headache headache really is, is what's going on there that's all i can think of and you know we do slam creative a lot but i can understand why their job is incredibly hard and how they must be burnt out must be that's the only the only thing around it uh fail of the week here we go so that's all i found feedback done just to advise as well if you do want to leave any any questions at all uh, we're still at the point we're getting there slowly where we're gonna have to start picking them out but um if you leave any question at the moment until further notice we will answer it we'll go through them and that's it and at least give some sort of semblance of an answer um because you know here on the show we do like to interact with you guys you know on a regular basis it's it's quite fun quite fun for us uh, but if you do want to leave any questions in the comments, or you can send them to at TalkWrestlePod, the Twitter handle there as well. Um, so, fail of the week. Here we go. This is a recent one, and it isn't from WCW, okay? Well, it can't be if it's recent. Well, that, yeah, yeah, to be honest. <laughs> kind of, you've, kind of, you've kind of slammed me down there already, Matt. You know? <laughs> um... uh, so, fail of the week. Uh, me and Matt were very into a rising star in the year of uh, just just around two, three years ago. Uh, He was coming up. He was famous for doing squash matches, and he was getting a lot of uh, fan response. It seemed like he was on the right track to be able to do some good work and maybe be, maybe not a huge star, but a big star for WWE. So, yeah, there was one guy, (coughs) excuse me, that um, was really starting to rise up, starting to make a name for himself. We thought this could be the starting of a new star for them, right? Yeah. You know him now. He wrestles today. His name is Ryback. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going yeah, this yeah, way. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so Ryback, yeah, he was on a on a hell of a streak. He was being booked as in, indestructible ass kicker, who would basically mow down one, two, maybe three people. You know, um, just just mopping up these guys as if they were nothing. And the whole feed me more thing was starting to go along. There was some Goldberg chance. It's getting chance. huge. Yeah, there was some Goldberg chance, but I'd we always argued back then that the Feed Me More was way more of a bigger chance than the whole Goldberg shtick ever was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was going well. Now, let's put you into the, into what happened here. Why is Ryback in our fair of the week? And it's not so much a moment. It is a period of around a year where Ryback lost seven, arguably eight, pay-per-views consecutively. Yeah. yeah, right. So it's it's not so much like something specifically about Ryback was a fail. It's the booking of Ryback yeah. was a fail. An utter disaster here. Essentially, let, let's uh, paint the picture for everyone involved here. That um, yeah, Goldberg, uh, not Goldberg. Sorry, <laughs> people are gonna laugh about that. Ryback is uh, is well over. Um, John Cena gets uh, like a mild injury. And uh, he was in a previously booked Hell in a Cell match with CM Punk for the title. This is in that lengthy CM Punk title run where he was going heel. He had Heyman beside him. Everything was working fine for him at that point. Um, And then they needed someone to fill that slot in a big main event area. And they decided, okay, we're going to give it to Ryback. Ryback's going to be the guy. He's going to go face uh, CM Punk for the title at Hell in a Cell. Uh, and he was undefeated at this point. He hadn't lost a single match. Never yeah. been pinned. Never submitted. Um, I don't think there was any disqualification losses, but it doesn't really matter. He was he was unbeaten at that point. Yeah. He goes in CM Punk. You may remember this as um, the Brad Maddox thing, where he helped CM Punk pin Ryback. Ryback was beaten by CM Punk. Yep. And that started With a, a nut shot. Yeah, that's it. It started up a very long string of him being consecutively beaten on pay-per-view. He got beaten by uh, CM Punk again when The Shield debuted. He got beaten by The Shield in their debut match. Mm -hmm. Then he uh, was in the Royal Rumble, and he was one of the last two um, with John Cena. John Cena eliminated him, so he lost that as well. I didn't count that in the seven losing streak. Technically, that's the eighth one. Uh, And then he had a rivalry with Mark Henry. We're thinking, me and Matt at this time are thinking, 
He's lost a lot of momentum. He's lost a lot of pay-per-view matches. He's starting to get a reputation now that if he gets to any chance at a big time, he flops. He fails. Yeah. And that reputation was starting to feed into him. And a lot of the heat out of Ryback was starting to go out. We're like, ah, you know. Back then, we were even stating that you probably should have given Ryback the belt, at very least for a month. Or something. Along just something, yeah. Yeah. Um, just something to keep this guy's momentum going. Because it was like someone popped the balloon. But the one thing we thought might get him back on track, he had a rivalry, if you remember, with with Mark Henry. Um, leading into a WrestleMania match. And it was almost too predictable in the sense that it was like, Ryback has to win this. Why the hell would Mark Henry beat him? It just makes no sense. There's no point. Doesn't it just doesn't make any sense at all? Ryback's right on this massive losing streak. Why would he lose? He lost. <clears throat> he had essentially he picked up Mark Henry. Mark Henry fell on him and pinned him. Yeah. And um and beat him at WrestleMania. And you might think, well, maybe at the very least does that lead somewhere? No. Basically, uh, Ryback turns heel, gets beaten by John Cena in the next two pay per views in a row. So yeah, there you go. And that was about it, yeah. And Ryback then was dead. He had a victory against Chris Jericho, which broke the the you know the streak of him losing, um, but it didn't get that much better for the guy. He just lost a lot of matches, um, back to back to back, and they essentially ripped apart everything that Ryback had going for him. He then he was heel. No one cared about him much as a heel. Wasn't getting any fan response. He was then fed to CM Punk, who was going face. Um, just a lot of this. Um, bouncing just falling you know just not yeah. going anywhere and all all this all this fantastic push and everything for Ryback he could have been a big star for them and suddenly it's nah, it's, all, it's all done and then he became nothing and arguably yeah. Uh, uh, meh. yeah the reason I bring this up is because it kind of reminds me a little bit of what's happened to Dean Ambrose recently In the, yeah that's true yeah I mean like look at him he was getting really really hot had his feud with Seth Rollins lost that few for Seth Rollins, and then went on and was made to look like a loser by Bray Wyatt. Yep. And now he's feuding for the IC title. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame that they can't capitalise more on these uh, on these on these guys that look like they legitimately have at least got a shot, you know, of getting up to the next yeah. level. And uh, I'm very so wary. Are we going to allow it? No. Yeah. It's interesting to see how long Dean Ambrose can go without winning a pay-per-view match. I know he's had a few now that he's lost consecutively. Yeah, that's uh, true. So that's interesting. Um, in, most people say, oh, well, he did, like, beat Bray Wyatt. No, he didn't. That was a disqualification that he had with Bray Wyatt, I believe. Or it just was, like, a no contest or something along those lines. So he did but, actually... then, but then he still lost the ambulance match. So... Yeah, he lost the ambulance. And he lost the TLC match, if you remember. Yeah. So, yeah, he's lost a lot of matches, Dean Ambrose. Um, and you know, back now we're seeing Ryback come into the, in, come into things, and we always look at look at him and wonder, yeah, he's he's still over as a face, but all of that, all that potential is just lost, all that potential just yeah. down the drain, uh, and it is a bit of a shame. And some people might say, oh, he was never going to become anything big. I'd argue that he, he got over pretty well, pretty well, yeah. considered, all things considered. Uh, Austin podcast time. I had to watch this thing almost three times um, because of uh, distractions here and there and uh, and everything along those lines. Getting the notes back for it as well. We watched uh, a large majority of this together in and out. We did, yeah. Uh, while you're over, I picked out a few talking points. If I do miss a few, then by all means, guys, leave comments in regards to what you want us to cover. Um, but here are some of the, the few things that uh, I picked up on watching this and one of the things with the triple h podcast and i don't know if you agree with this i don't think it was as entertaining as the vince podcast i thought as well i that... think it's because they had there's there's history between vince and austin and i think that's what made it yes to some degree i think i think unfortunately a large chunk of triple h seemed to be talking about his philosophy on how he wants to run the show and that's well documented. We can see that each, you know, majority of the time each week. Um, and what he wants to do. A lot of it was chaff, especially at the beginning. The first half an hour yeah. I found was very drawn out. And Austin kind of let Triple H just ramble on about what he really wanted to. 
um, which was a bit of a shame. However, we did get some good tidbits of information here, um, some some good statements that we can talk about. He says here that Triple H would like to go back to a two-hour show, and he admitted that the third hour is very, very hard to book on a weekly basis. Yeah. Uh, the line that I have said each week, that I know you agree with, Matt, the third hour of Raw will eventually kill this show. Kill Raw, yeah. Um, it makes the show really poor uh, overall. Um, and going back to two hours would condense a lot of the stuff and remove a lot of the BS and filler that the show is undoubtedly full of. Well, just imagine Raw without all these previously or yeah. a little earlier on, we had this and that and blah and blah. But at the end of the day, when they put those sort of stuff in, it's... There's one or two reasons why they're doing it. One, because they think we're too stupid to remember. Or two, or two, that it's that they've got nothing else better to fill the show. And that's... Yeah. They're both as bad as each other, really. But you know what I mean? That's they, They're trying... You can tell a lot of the stuff that they're doing is to fill out the show. Th- pad out the three hours. And I would argue that a show already did that once. And they're no longer with us. WCW did it. And it made their show even worse at that point. And it was getting bad. Um, three hours is just too long. It's just, oh, right. Too long for a wrestling show. Two hours, technically, if you look at it from a very objective standpoint, two hours is too long for a wrestling show. We've, just been, can, we've been educated to believe that two hours is the regular running. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I'll accept two hours. But three hours is, is just ridiculous on a weekly basis. Um, the fact is that I find it very hard on some weeks to even comprehend watching all three hours it just takes up too much of that's my time. it it's just sort of like oh i still got like, like oh i'm nearly done i've still got another hour yeah yeah i mean like i don't know if you're the same as me man we talked about this before but often i will watch it in like blocks of two or three i have to. yeah i i'll i'll generally snip it i can't i don't i think there's been a very few times where i've been able to just binge on it yeah yeah and i think you know, especially with the network around, WWE wants us to binge on all their content. It just it gets us burned out. It just gets us too burned out, and get, makes people more jaded because they, you know, you you'll be given too much. You know, there is uh, you're oversaturating your own products, and we've said that all along. Moving the three hours was a was a stupid move, so, um, and it will kill the show just outright. It might not happen in one year, two year, but if they continue to keep doing three hours for a multitude of years, I promise that fans will leave. Fans will just... And they may not even come back to wrestling. They just might decide this is just too much work to keep up with, you know? Yeah. Uh, He says as well that China has no chance, essentially, of making the Hall of Fame essentially due to her porn career. Yeah. Um, I think the line is that he said, which I think was very poignant as well, and whether or not you disagree with it, he's got some notion in saying this. I I completely... Are you referring to his whole... I have an eight-year-old daughter. Yeah. She doesn't know who China is. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the first thing that she's going to do? She's going to type up China. What's the first thing that's going to pop up on Google? Even though Google's pretty good for not showing loads of porn on there. But you know what I mean? That you try to do extensive research into the women, and then you and then you realise... Then you suddenly realise, oh, she's a crackhead porn star. Yeah. I didn't know she's a crackhead. Well, wow. <laughs> now you know what I mean. Essentially, at very lowest, she's sucking dick for a living. And, yeah. Um, she got to that point where she's doing it. Now, I don't want to blast the adult film career. Fair enough. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, um, they do run a very public PG rated product. And some people might argue, oh, that shouldn't get in the way of her having a Hall of Fame career. I'd argue that that's exactly what would get you out of the way of having a WWE Hall of Fame. That's, that's it. Let's just be realistic here. Um, like, for instance, Chris Benoit will never, ever be in the Hall of Fame. And I agree that he should be, personally. I think sometimes your actions after your wrestling career taint your overall legacy. And I don't think that China's overall legacy has been tainted by the fact she chose to go into the adult film. That's much less of a big no-no than, you know, the whole Benoit thing. But it still stops you. I I still think that's a roadblock, and I think you should be understandable. If I was in her shoes, I'd, I'd, I'd have to think, well... I can't really argue with them here, you know? Yeah. It's like they they have a point. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, She chose to do that. She chose to have her sex tape. Um, And people might argue, oh, well, X-Pac had a sex tape, but he might get inducted. Uh, Well, he hasn't been inducted yet, so. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll reserve judgment on that one. Reserve judgment, yeah. 
Uh, although, you know, if he does get inducted solo, if he gets inducted as part of a group, he's maybe does the gloss off it a little bit if he gets in part, inducted as part of DX. But if he gets inducted solo, then maybe she does have a um, a voice for Chance, this. Chance, yeah. That, um, well, he did, and they actively, together, did a sex tape. You know, it's hard to do yeah. those precedents, you know. that's true. No, she did went off went off and made a career on it, but I still think that um, it's the same thing. Um, so, yeah, for people wondering, no, nah, Charlie's not going in the Hall of Fame. I, just outright. I don't think so. I don't see it happening. I don't buy into it. Uh, states uh, also that uh, they brought up CM Punk. It states that um, Triple H believes that the, the man has communication issues, but harbours no resentment towards him. Now, I called bullshit all over that. Um, yeah. How many stories have we heard from legitimate sources that have stated that Triple H doesn't even want the words CM Punk stated backstage? That's it. If he had his way, just even the letters C and M would never exist. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's and you know a lot of negative stuff was said towards Triple H. Triple H throughout the majority of this interview had his corporate hat on and dodged a few questions. And Austin was didn't really push the marker of well, how do you respond to him saying this about you? There was nothing along those lines. Yeah. Um, and some people, and you know, I might state there he could have been a little bit more ruthless. But there's only uh, so much so much level that Austin can go, considering he's under the WWE banner when he does those podcasts. You know, there's some questions that realistically he can't ask. Yeah. That's it. Um, so, I have to be around, around that. But come on, everyone can smell bullshit from a mile away. Um, everyone knows, and I trust CM Punk completely with this, that the pair just flat out don't like each other. Flat yeah. out. Just resent each other. It happens. Yeah. Uh, it's not like we're going to go, oh no, how can people just not get on? Yeah. It, it happens. <laughs> and to say that um, Triple H holds no resentment, I, I heavily disagree. I think the guy is incensed about what he what CM Punk did. But there we are. He also remarked as well that he would uh, eventually like to make it so promos are done via bullet points and people then can make their own spin on things. Uh, but he also did state that, you know, they have sponsors. They have, they're have a publicly traded company now. So they need to be careful uh, letting the guys speak How, to yeah. them. Essentially having a leash on them is, is essentially going on here. Um... And that is the main reason, guys, why we don't have good, you know, long, lengthy, good promos um, at the moment is because they're being scripted out because WWE are too afraid that these guys might say something and it comes back on them too badly. Um, and yeah. they lose stock, they, you know, their stock market rating goes down. Um, you know, it just looks bad on all, on their investors, all their sponsors that they have involved in the show. Um, you could state there that the company's gone too corporate, um, and that's a whole different topic for itself. I can understand where he's coming from this, but at the end of the day, it really does impact how genuine the show feels. Um, you know, the fact is, how many times have you been blasted? They're reading from a script. We can tell they're reading from a script. Yeah. Too well, many how many times have we seen like Randy Orton come out with his lines on his hands? Yeah, it gets to a ridiculous point. Um, that these guys are just spouting out pages of exposition, and sometimes it doesn't even seem to lead anywhere. Um, yeah, and it, it just seems that everything's rehearsed, and if the show reeks of it at the moment, that's a problem. Yeah. But to, to yeah, from a business standpoint, I can completely understand where they're coming from. I just think that it damages the show overall. But there we are. Um, there was another as well they here that they basically uh, stated here, which was something we've known all along, and you know they're kind of just stating it that uh, you know the era of kayfabe has died. Yep, that, that is effectively true, and it's just a bit funny considering all the way throughout their show they're in kayfabe on the show talking about the podcast, and then they come on the podcast and say, "Oh, kayfabe's dead." You know, so this is a reality era. Yeah, um, at least he sort of went into a bit of explanation as to what the the reality era is. Yeah, and I do agree with them to that point. You know, it's harder to book now because it's you don't have to go to like a you know you don't have to smuggle in a dirt a dirt sheet anymore. All that stuff is readily available, and it's also reported on much freer. Yeah. You know, TMZ now seems to be all over reporting WWE stuff and, and all those lines, so it's much easier to find out those stories. Um, I would state that they, especially with the whole plugging the podcast, they seem to have a problem sometimes um, having a decision on where kayfabe stops and starts 
Um, and they even, yeah. they even do it on Total Divas sometimes. And it's like, oh, I've had this really tough match with Natty and I don't know who's going to win. We only found out the last minute. Well, no, that's we know that's not the point. You know, <laughs> and we know we know so, that. I Divas. don't think so. I'm calling bullshit. Yeah, yeah. It's... And it adds to the feeling now that we just don't know what's genuine inside that company. We don't know what feels genuine, you know, and it's a big problem that, you know, yeah. some some fans, including myself, find it hard to get behind people because we feel that they're too... It's, they, essentially, they are being worked by the cogs and wheels backstage, and yeah, I think that, that damages things. Um, so, yeah, there was that. Is there anything else I've missed there? I, I like, can't think of anything. No. Nah. I know we talked a lot about separate guys, but I one of the things I like one of the things I disliked about this. This wasn't Triple H shooting the shit and talking everything that he wanted to. He, you know, he had his corporate hat on. He was being very careful with his answers. Yeah. And he was being somewhat reserved. And Austin was was not being as um, pushy about it all. Um, he wasn't as ruthless as he has been on previous podcasts. Not no. even with the one that he was with Vince, you know, when he asked Vince a lot of stuff, are you out of touch and everything along these lines. Um, there was no questions along those lines to Triple H. He didn't really push a lot of these things. But as I said, it's under... A lot of people gave Austin... I, I'm a big fan of Austin. A lot of people gave Austin credit, including me, on his very sort of uh, attacking sort of podcast style. Not attacking, but cutting edge i think you know he was cutting to the points in this one he seemed to let triple h sort of dictate things he was just yeah letting triple h talk about what he pretty much want to talk about and it was only towards the end of the podcast when they were running out of time where he really started thinking oh i've got to ask some some questions here you know yeah so it's a bit of a shame like I said. it's still worth a watch guys maybe I'm there's still like i quite like the fact that he, he like he, he talks quite a bit about nxt as well which obviously he would do because it's his brainchild yeah um, his baby. He is his baby, yeah. And he says good stuff, and obviously it's not it's not like you could say bad things about NXT, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, he says yeah. And you know, it's it's and you can tell just from 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 listening to the guy that he is very proud of NXT and um, yeah. the, all the stuff that's done there. And to some degree I, I agree with a lot of stuff he says about it, you know, the way that they make NXT to emulate a lot of the um you know the ramp and the Titan Tron and everything along those lines. So, yeah, I, 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 you know, that's that's all good stuff. That's all it all works well. But like I said, I just don't think it was nearly as um, cutting edge. And yeah. was, the, I thought the first half of this podcast, almost like Raw, was just a lot of babbling. Just it didn't seem to really go that 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 far. But that's just yeah, my opinion. Sure. Like it was still worth a watch, and like I said, I want to just advise people. It's still very entertaining. I would, I, 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 I would definitely take it to your time out to watch the podcast. Yeah. Um. Anyway, let's move on from that. If you did miss anything that you guys want us to chat about, what you said, like I said, leave it in the comments. There, just a few things that um that I stated down below. Um, you know that I caught as I as I watched the the show itself. Yeah. There's one thing before we. So I'm guessing next would be on to Raw. Yeah. But mm-hmm. before we do that. Remember last week we we discussed a lot more of NXT. Okay, yeah, sure. And we were talking about the um, the number one contender tournament. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you have you seen how terribly wrong we were? What do you mean terribly wrong? The, well, not terribly wrong, but the Baron Corbin would beat Neville. Yeah, I I didn't think I thought that he uh, well I thought that maybe he would beat Neville and then he'd get cost he, he'd get. You know, the match cost him by Bull Dempsey. So at least I got that. You know, we got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just sort of like, oh, uh, even though it's now going to be Baylor versus Neville. Yeah, yeah. Come on, that's yeah. Gonna be cool. One thing I will say is that we were very excited for the uh, Itami and and Baylor match, and it was very good. I, I feel maybe I oversold it a bit. I was expecting a, um, a humdinger, uh, shall we say, and. I thought it was okay. I thought it was good. Definitely. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I just don't think it was uh, amazing. But maybe they're saving some of their, their biggest guns for maybe the specials that they might eventually have. Which is next other. week. Yeah, yeah. Should be, that, that, that show is shaping up to be very good. We will review that. We will review that. Um, that's oh, just so good. So good. This week's NXT I thought was okay. Um, and... It, one of the things I like about NXT, it almost seems like every match has a purpose. How many matches do we have on Raw that just have no purpose? Everything yeah. on NXT seems like it's at least going like, somewhere. They've only got an hour to, uh, per week to fill the time, and then sort of come the weekend, bam. Yeah, 
That's it. That's one of the things that Triple H said as well, that he says that that show is actually um, booked and as us, you know, as, as wrestling fans, as a demographic. And yeah. they should look at that and think, well, we get way more response and people behind our characters there booking it that way. Maybe we should make that a little bit more. Um, I get the feeling that Vince wants Raw to so be more... go of, with that, yeah. Yeah. I think Vince wants Raw to be looked at more like a variety show, and I hate that feeling, you know? Yeah. Uh, let's get on to Raw now anyway, because we'll talk plenty about, about uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, and it's the uh, first one, you know, proper one from, you know, the Raw, Raw Rumble debacle that happened there. Yeah. Um, last week was a snowstorm. Triple H had promised a big announcement on the show. Um, and, to, you know, it's from now on until WrestleMania. It is going to be interesting to see how all the fans take to Roman Reigns each week in, week out. It's going to be very testing off of their management's capabilities to get the fans fully behind Roman Reigns for the for WrestleMania. And it is possible. The so. thing is, though, like... I'm sure I've mentioned this before. It's like, is every other crowd going to dick on Reigns as much as Philadelphia? I oh, know. No. Like, would... He came out here and got cheered. Yeah, I would argue, though, that the, ver- that, that the crowd of Philadelphia shares a lot of similarities to the same sort of crowd that will go to a WrestleMania and a Raw after WrestleMania. So there is that worry. I still think there's a huge worry that he might go out there and get booed to shit. That is still there. I think people yeah. play, downplay it a bit because I think... That's this... true. I mean, a, a Philly crowd is more diehard than the rest. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, that being said, it should... I, I I do think there's a chance that WWE can save their graces here. And I do think they made some some big strides in doing that this week. Um, however, this show, at the very beginning, the first half of the show was utter horrible. We'll go into, into that as well. Uh, the show came from Den- from Denver anyway. Um, so <laughs> the, we had a warning in the comments from, from Robert Chapman, our fan, uh, stating that, uh, the authority would open the show. So had the warning there. Didn't really need him to tell me that would happen. We all know that would happen, you know, regardless, you know, um, and they must be getting close to beating their record for consecutive shows opened at this point. I, can't, I haven't got the numbers. I probably won't cool, do them. Probably. But they must be getting close shortly by now, you know. In regards to how many that they've, that they've opened now, uh, I don't think they've missed one since they've returned. I'm pretty sure that that is the case. Since they were brought back, I don't think they've they've missed an opening set. I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah, uh, we all know it was bound to happen anyway. They uh, start talking about the Super Bowl um, using the the, um, the cheap sports heat and in in regards to that. Um, Something happened in football. Yeah, <laughs> catch the fever. Uh, for anyone that caught um, Katy Perry's mid, uh, you know, halftime show, and she had like the flame suit on or whatever, and everyone's like saying, "Oh, you know, putting photoshopping her as a manager of Bam Bam Bigelow." I give thumbs up to those people. That's oh amazing. God, yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, they uh, actually reference here the uh, hashtag cancel WWE Network trend on Twitter. <laughs> jokingly uh, jokingly yeah and <laughs> you know what? they have some reason to be a little bit um you know to troll a little bit here because uh most of the people i would state that would be so incensed that they would cancel their subscription would see the nxt special coming up next week and think hmm, i should probably get back on that bandwagon yeah, it's like oh, whoops <laughs> yeah should probably get back onto that um they uh show the finish of the rumble I would argue this was a dumb thing because at the, before the opening credits of the show and the fireworks and everything, they already showed the finish of the Rumble, so that was a little bit irrelevant. They showed the same. It was sort of just like, oh, don't like we're trying to fix the like fix what went wrong sort of thing. So let's show them what went wrong. Yeah, twice in a matter well, of a couple yeah. of minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. like you what? <laughs> don't understand why they had to do that. You know, that was a bit stupid. Uh, Triple H says that uh, while Kane and Show at the end of the Royal Rumble were unsportsmanlike. It was The Rock's involvement that was the controversy. I think it's quite funny that they, they're trying to stick in kayfabe there. Oh, it was The Rock who was the controversial figure. Not the fact that you dumped out, you know, Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Bryan halfway through the match, yeah. yeah. Um, he alludes to Sting's return being the real reason behind it all, setting a precedence of people returning and changing things out of plan. Uh, and then he officially calls out Sting at Fastlane to resolve their issues. 
Um, it'd be quite funny if they brought out like Jeremy Kyle or Jerry Springer just to sit him down and have a <laughs> chat, find out who the father is. Uh, what? Um, so <laughs> they then they plug the network. You know they they would be. It's a free month as they're going to do. That's it. Uh, so this is where the I think that the precedence of the show was pretty much set in terms of the first hour of the show. I stated ages ago on a review I did of TNA, that, and I know I've said this before, that they have, they had this promo, they had this segment of the show that people kept coming in and out. Um, they kept talking for a little while, someone else was coming and interrupt. And it got to a point where I was like, where the fuck is this going to end? And this, this particular segment reeked of it. Um, it really did. Uh, and it started here, because when they plugged the network... Uh, Stephanie asked if uh, Rain should really face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, considering really, you know, it was a kind of a false victory, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and this brings out Roman Reigns, who has now the ability of, of John Cena. You know, if he has his name called, then he just comes out. Doesn't help all those rumours of him being booked as Cena 2.0, but still. Yeah. Uh, I guess that rule kind of applies to everyone in the, in the starting thing. If you get your name called... You 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 could pretty much magically appear, you know. It's just just the way it is. Uh, all I can imagine is just everyone, you know, all the entire roster standing like literally just by the Titan Tron. If their name gets said, they just run out. They're too excited. Their name got said, they need to run out and 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 do their thing. Um, and as you said there, Matt, this week the crowd were very favourable towards Reigns. He got chanted way more than booed, you know. Yeah. And throughout the majority of the show, you know, much more forgiving crowd of reigns and i do think that having last week as the snowstorm episode cooled off a lot of people's feelings towards the finish get it uh, get it you like it you like that because it's like cooled in the cut in the snow I, and, thought, uh... I, I thought you might miss that a little bit you know <laughs> <laughs> um so and as i said there a wrestlemania crowd won't act the same as this i can promise you that whether or not it will be too bad or not we'll see Reigns is pissed off anyway. He gets in Triple H's face and tells him, hell no, I'm not going to lose my spot. You're taking it away from me. Steph breaks them up and she goes, oh, blah, 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 blah. Essentially just exposition. Oh, I was getting very bored of this at this point. But then Daniel Bryan comes out. So, yeah, I could get into Daniel Bryan being around there. That's cool. Um, this is, um, by the way, the segment has already gone on 15 minutes. I don't know how they managed yeah. to drag this out this long. Daniel Bryan comes out. Daniel Bryan reminds them that he's owed a rematch from having the title stripped from him and he wants it at WrestleMania. Triple H says that Daniel Bryan uh, failed to uh, fulfill his contractual obligations by not defending the title in the allotted time. And I would like to advise that Brock Lesnar probably did the same when he did defend his title. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he hasn't done that yet. Yeah. Uh, but we'll just forget that because, you know, it's only consistency and we don't need to He's worry about that. He's now. Yeah. Uh, you may be thinking, oh, maybe this is a good chance to end the promo. No, Seth Rollins comes out and it goes blah, blah, blah. Oh, I need to be the person, blah, blah, blah. I blah, put blah. a chink in his armour. I broke his rib, blah, blah, blah. I, forward. I don't know about you, Matt. I, I fucking tuned out to the point that it had to go on an advertisement break for their opening promo. <sighs> Guys, I know that I do this all the time. I say, I want matches to start off shows. And I know you guys must be sick of it. But come on. You my guys must be sick of this sort of stuff going on. An ad break in the middle of a promo to start your show. That's how long this promo went on for. Jesus Christ. It's going on way too long. It, ca- it carries on anyway. Rollins says that Lesnar would eat Daniel Bryan alive. And he has very little compassion for Bryan's injury. And he says, oh, da- oh, Roman Reigns wouldn't have won the Rumble without Rock's interference. Uh, he wants a match as he broke, um, wants a match with Lesnar as he's the man who broke his rib, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, chink in the armor, blah, blah, blah. Fucking hell. I can't even go into the rest of his said here because I know me explaining it to you is boring. So manage, ima- imagine, if you will, watching this show and then drawing this stuff out. This opening segment was a pile of shit. And whoever there decides to keep booking these segments like this, it's obviously obviously Vince loves having these shows that have a hook for the rest of the show. 
And it eventually got there. They announced the fact they're going to have a match between Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins. And whoever wins that will face Reigns at Fastlane. Whoever wins that will go and face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. So they eventually got there. It took them over 25 minutes of constant talking <laughs> yeah. to get to this point. I would state that on some of these shows that they want to be compared to, right? They're entertainment now, Matt. They're not wrestling. They're sports entertainment. So they want to That's be it. ranked up along the shows of uh, of the weekly episodic shows. Um, you know, they, they, they constantly keep name-dropping stuff like Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead and stuff like this, right? They really want to be... Comp- oh, God, yeah. yeah. I just realised with like, The Walking Dead, it's like how many times did uh, JBL call Luke Harper a zombie? Yeah, yeah. The amount of times they reference that because they want to be compared. That's what they think their competition is. They're not. They're so far away from that. But that's what they think their competition is, right? And if they do firmly believe that, then you have to realize that their competition only has an hour each week to do their shows. Do you really think they could draw out one plot point for half an hour along that show? No. I reckon we could get a three-hour Game of Thrones episode. I would love three hours Game of Thrones, but that's just because we love that show, right? But, exactly. come on, this is ridiculous. 30 minutes to get, to just announce what's going to happen. Um, I think was, uh, ugh, it's, it's far too long. Vince himself openly admitted that maybe the, uh, on the Stone Cold podcast, that possibly the opening segments do go on too long. And what, and you think, okay, awesome. That's got over to him. He's in touch with us, okay? Maybe the, the opening segments are start are going to start being shaved off a little bit. Guys, they've got longer. How the fuck have they got longer? After yes, meeting? Like, oh, maybe, maybe they do go on too long. Like, thank you for finally understanding that. Half an hour. <sighs> what? It's gonna and this and tell you what, this whole thing <laughs> is them trying to fill out part of their show because they've got nothing else better to fill it with. So, this is the third hour, guys. This is the third hour that they have to book for overall, filling in the rest of their show, and it was a horrible way to start the show. And even though the crowd were pretty good and they were kind of, you know, doing what WWE wanted them to do, cheering who they wanted, booing who they wanted, having this opening segment just took out all the energy out of them. Um, 25 minutes of constant talking. I, I was shaking my head and it got me in a bad mood with the rest of this. And you know what? I have to slam someone in this promo and it was someone that I don't like to slam. Because she is pretty good at dropping promos. I Steph. thought Stephanie McMahon <laughs> was shocking in this promo. I thought she was the most wooden out of all of them. She has sounded, since she returned, as if she's reading off of a script. That's one thing I hadn't really said much about Steph. She doesn't tend to sound like she's following a script. Here, she sounds like she's exactly doing that. And maybe she's tuned out herself. I, I wouldn't blame her, because I had tuned out of this at this point. It... It was it was a really bad segment, guys. Doesn't matter if it's a good segment. Doesn't ha- it can't go on that long. It can't. Oh, sorry, it's, guys. It's I, I hate ranting about it. I know that you guys must be sick about it, but come on, twenty five minutes with an ad break. Come on. <laughs> but don't worry, it all got made better. Well, you say big, that. Big show. Yeah. Basically, they announced that a big show is going to face Roman Reigns. Um, again. <laughs> again. And every um, every time that you, you know, they had an ad break after this to bring Big Show to the ring. And they bring you back into the match, and it's basically the last the last blows. The, the match itself, what we saw on TV, lasted probably less than three minutes. Yeah. And um, essentially, Roman, Re- Roman Reigns gets distracted. He gets you know, bashed in the back by the briefcase by Rollins. Sets up, uh, you know, Big Show to choke slam him, get the win. And um, Reigns is pinned at the very beginning of the show. Um, so, you know, there's like, you know, they were saying... Oh, way, to look, way to make Reigns look strong. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but we were, especially after that first 25 minutes, even though it was Big Show against Roman Reigns, which we've seen to death at this point, I was ready to see some in-ring action. And the fact is that when we get back and we see essentially the match is already over... I was like, oh, they're doing this again, aren't they? They're going to keep doing it. Um, and essentially, the first, as I said, guys, the first hour of the show was fucking horrible. It really was. Yeah. Stephanie and uh, Triple H backstage, they're stating that they uh, wouldn't have been able to strip Roman of his shots without his consent. So they're going, ha, 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 we fooled him. Ha, ha, we found a loophole in the contractual system. Mm, yeah. Um, 
Triple H then says that, oh, with the uh, podcast with Austin, he'll be able to manipulate Austin as well. This is the thing that I was stating that was really awkward, that they were speaking on in kayfabe on the show, and then they go on to the podcast and say, oh, kayfabe's dead. Yeah. So why are you acting like this then? Why are you trying to treat it like the podcast was part of storyline when it had nothing to do with storyline? It was very odd the way that they did this. Um, yeah, they broke fourth wall here in some impressive fashion. They were breaking the fourth wall and then trying to build it back up again, then breaking the fourth wall and then trying to build it back up again. It's a bit odd. I just don't know why they would do that, to be honest. Curtis Axel comes back. Has a lot of people saying he is the true winner of the Royal Rumble. Um, people. I don't going, know who says that. Uh, all the meme sites and all that crap. <laughs> I know they're going along with a joke, but realistically, do you want to see Curtis Axel against Brock Lesnar? Like, oh, I could have won it! Oh, I should be going to WrestleMania! It's like, no, Curtis. <laughs> you got to NXT to reboot your career. <laughs> like, you don't go to WrestleMania. Yeah, Curtis Axel will be lucky if he got a match at WrestleMania, let alone the main event at WrestleMania. He's currently lucky if he gets a match on NXT. Yeah, exactly. He's just been losing tons of them. Tons of matches on NXT since he's returned. Uh, he's, yeah, at the very start of his promo, he comes out and urges us not to turn off the channel because he has something to say. And he's good he said that because I imagine when Curtis Axel comes out, a few people were already reaching for their remote, especially after that opening segment as well. A lot of people would be thinking, actually, you know what? I might turn the channel over. Do you like, know what? I am done with Raw today. Yeah. <laughs> he says that uh, he was robbed, robbed, he says, of the Mania main event. And he wants Brock Lesnar for the title. Uh, all the while, the announcers are laughing at him, by the way, as if he's the biggest joke around. Uh, Ambrose comes out and eliminates him by throwing him over the top rope. Ambrose then says he wants to challenge uh, Bad News Barrett for the Intercontinental Championship because he reminds us all, by the way, that he pinned Barrett in a non-title match a few weeks ago. So that entitles him to a title match. Are we well, go- are we going with this philosophy now? Because I'll go, I'll, I'll go with that philosophy because at least it's a justified one. I well, argue just it like, isn't. Well, no. If you can beat the champion, then you deserve a okay. shot at his title. I, I here here we go. Matt. I will explain why it isn't a right thing. I get exactly what you're saying, but if you're going under the philosophy of I beat the champion in a non-title match, so I, that that grants me a title match. Bad News Barrett and all the former Intercontinental Championship uh, champions would have a fucking line. Full of people that deserve a title match against them. Because they get beaten time and time again by people. And they yeah, never okay. got their title match. If they want to start doing this now, and obviously that's the way they're going about it. I deserve a title match because I beat him. I, I, obj- I, I am obliged to have a, a title match. Then how many people are, are owed a title match? For majority of the belts, Divas belt, tag team belts, um, the, the IC title belt, not so much the US now, but the US title back when Dean Ambrose and and Sheamus had it. Jesus Christ, you know. Even so, if we go by that by by that by that thought, um, this time last year, Cesaro, when he meant something, beat the WWE World Heavyweight Champion in a singles match. He beat Randy Orton clean, one, two, three, in the middle of the ring. Did Cesaro get a title match? I would think if he was obliged to have a one-on-one title match with the guy, then I think he would have taken it. Fair point. So I think that whole thing of I've beaten him in a non-title match, that, that, that grants me a title match. I think WWE have already shot themselves in the foot with that entire concept. I don't buy it. And if they want to use that as an excuse for them having the belt, they're going to. But that whole thing of consistency, you know, I... I just think it's a bit stupid. You love that word, don't you? I just, come on, come on. I do love consistency. That's it. Like, we were trying to think sort of the other week, like, new things for the T-shirt, consistency. Consistency. Just just, just a black T-shirt with just consistency written across it with a little LTW badge. There you go. That's it. Ah, so, there we are. And my people might stay, oh, with my Cesaro um, thing. Oh, but he was in a time, he was in the Elimination t- uh, Chamber match. Oh, come on, guys. That's kind of drawing it that strings there if you beat the type champion they're saying here that you should have a don't one mention one. the elimination chamber i'm still upset that it's gone <laughs> that you're not getting it this year i like the elimination chamber i think it will come back i think it'll be on one of the events this year it just won't have its own pay-per-view name so there we are. uh they show a video vignette for black history month um for ernie lad uh, mm-hmm. and a lot of people may have thought oh this is really really great and i agree the video package is pretty good uh unfortunately you have to remember that this is exactly the same video package they used this time last year so they haven't changed the video package they're just airing the same one yeah 
Um, and I would go, and this is going in a little bit more of um, a morality debate, and I'm interested to see what our fans think of this, especially you know our you know if we have any you know black listeners of of the podcast. That uh, I go with Morgan Freeman's uh, assessment about it, and he had a very interesting interview that he actually finds, along with some some black people, that um, Black History Month is actually like fairly racist. Yeah, that is actually a bit of an insult. Yeah, um, it's like getting patted on the head for being, you know, for all the accomplishments that they've done, they would argue that they wouldn't want it at all, that they would want to be treated the same. Um, Wasn't it in that interview that he was like, do you have a white history month? Yeah, exactly. Um, They would like to be treated exactly the same, equal, not to be, you know, lauded and to be seen as if they're, oh, you did great, here you go, we'll give you a month and show the world your accomplishments. It's kind of like showing it a little bit of a childish thing along those lines. I operate kind of on the same thing. I don't know whether you think that as well. I mean, our, our our opinion doesn't really matter, I'd state, because we're both white. But I don't think it really matters because we're both English as well. Because it's like we don't have that in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, me, I operate on the same thing when it comes to men, women, um, you know, straight, gay, white, black. You're a person. I'll treat you like a person. That's kind of the whole thing that I go around it. You know. Um, yep. So I can't. I like I said, I'm kind of with. I can understand. You know Morgan Freeman, why he wouldn't be that happy? But WWE trying to be politically correct, they 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 will do a whole segment on it. They'll they'll show vignettes and stuff. It's just a shame that they couldn't do a new vignette. I mean that one was already used. So the Ascension against Stardust and Goldust next. Um, I was like, oh really? They're like like the Ascension now don't even get entrance time, and then mm. I realised that Gold and Stardust were already in the ring as well. I was like, yeah. wow. So we have time apparently on the show. For a 25-minute opening promo, but not enough time for entrances for either of these teams. Yeah. Uh, as you say there, Matt, I think that's a bit shitty, personally. Yeah. But, uh, Booker T then goes a little bit mental, defending the Ascension from JBL's jibbing. J- remember, JBL said at the Rumble, I'm mighty impressed that they managed to beat the Outlaws. And then suddenly he's gone, they've only beaten the Outlaws, it's nothing. And That's like, it. Like, what does it matter? They just beat a couple of 40-year-old men. Hmm. So like, JBL follows Vincent Mann's mood swings backstage. He's just, you know, the way it is. Um, and a lot of people do state that JBL is pretty much Vince's mouthpiece. You know, but, you know he's basically feeding him all of his lines. Um, so the match is over again within a few minutes. The first hour of this show fucking it was horrible. To be fair, I didn't even like this match because it was like, it seemed like a real meh. Yeah. Like, a, like something went wrong and I don't know, I can't tell what. It seemed like they went to the point of clusterfuck really quickly and it just finished the match. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, I think like Victor went, not Victor, um, Connor went for his half for the fallen man. And then suddenly realised that Victor wasn't ready, so he just went again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just—it was sloppy, wasn't it? Really? Um, <clears throat> maybe because they were trying to, you know, save time. The fact that the opening promo was twenty-five minutes long. Uh, maybe it's just because, like, Raw, like Vince doesn't like the Ascension. He thinks they're shit. <laughs> yet he refuses to look at NXT and go, "Oh, these guys can go." Because they wrestle, Matt. Remember, it's sports entertainment. Not wrestling. Yeah, I know. It's not wrestling. Wrestling is what his dad did, okay? All right? Maybe maybe we should rise um, Vince McMahon Sr. from the grave and get him to t- retake over the, the, um, <laughs> the thing. And you'd argue that maybe he would be a little bit more in touch with what's going on with the fans at the moment than his son is. Um, so Stardust then berates his brother for losing and then leaves without him. They, they're teasing the split here. Backstage afterwards, Stardust is freaking out. Goldust says, what are you doing, Cody? You know, he tries to call him, and then he doesn't get any response, so he calls him Cody. Stardust then says, never call him Cody again, and hisses in his face. And That's it. I would state here, as we said in our interview at uh, the Wrestling Boom blog, um, that we do expect these guys to have a match at Mania, and I do expect it to be Goldust's retirement match. That's how I see it going down. Um, and you know they're teasing it, so it definitely seems like they're going that way. So um, that whole hissing—I think it's got a bit longer in him, but yeah, no, I definitely see the end of the Dust Brothers. It's the beginning of the end. I think people can definitely yeah. agree with. I think that it should be the end. I don't think you should go past WrestleMania. That should be your your moment to yeah. wave goodbye to the fans, have a kick-ass match with your brother, and leave it at that. He always wants that match at WrestleMania with his brother. He wanted it for years. He didn't get it. He got the tag team run, which I think was great for him. 
But now he's got a chance where he could have it, and he could ride off into the sunset. And everyone would look at his career and go, you know what? Well done, mate. You did pretty damn well for yourself for a I guy. See it. For, for Especially a... his his like recent return, where he's actually come back sort of better than ever. Yeah, yeah. I think I think arguably people will remember him now more for what he's done in the last couple of years than people will remember him back when he was, you know, the artist formerly known as Goldust, or you know, when he was coming out with the wigs each week and all yeah. that stuff. Um, yeah, I think he'll that's feuding the, with Piper. <laughs> yeah, he'll have a lot, you know. Uh, he he did he's done really great here, you know. I think that's done done great for him. Uh, John Cena then he has a part here where he welcomes back Ziggler, Rowan, and Ryback back to Raw. We have to remember, guys, that they only missed around about three at tops four episodes of Raw. Yeah. So welcoming them back really isn't that much of a welcome thing. back. It's almost like you've just been away on holiday yeah. rather than actually. To be honest, I didn't. Gone. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't really noticed that much that that they weren't around. Um, they weren't gone on long for that for that enough. Cena plugs Austin's podcast, saying that Austin will get the answers from Triple H. And I'm like, R- come on, this whole kayfabe, no kayfabe thing is getting very frustrating at this point. It makes yeah. no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Especially considering we actually saw the Austin podcast before we watched Raw. Yeah. So it's yeah. like to hear sort of Triple H, like Triple H said, kayfabe was dead. Before we went into a very kayfabe heavy roar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where he's going, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna work Austin. He's never gonna see it coming. It's like, what? Okay. Uh, so the Cena says that Triple H is afraid to fire him, um, and he might get put through loads of crap, but he will never give up. He'll, you know, hustle, loyalty, respect, blah blah blah. You know. He keeps referring to like a face injury. I couldn't tell. Like, I think I saw he had an eye that was a little yeah. bit shut, and I was yeah. like, oh, if you look at my face. No, I've looked at your face for years, John. Like, I don't want to... Like, just get rid of it. Maybe it's because you're kind of falling asleep at this point with this. this uh, I will state, however, that this is at the point of the show where things started to pick up a bit. And it got... Yeah. It got good all of a sudden. It's because we then got actual, like, straight matches yeah. of good... of re- Like, of good to great quality. It's quite strange, isn't it? If you put wrestling on a wrestling show, people tend to enjoy it. Oh, sorry, sorry, Matt. A sports entertainment. You put sports show. entertainment on a sports entertainment <laughs> yeah, show. Of course. Oh dear. Um, so they br- he brings all the group out um, to Ryback's music, which I thought was odd. I thought Ziggler would have been the guy leading. The choice, the yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's fr- it's frustrating to me. Uh, you know, they will talk about in storyline and everything, and you got to look at it from the storyline, the character's perspective. All these three men are ecstatic to be back into the ring. And it's like, do you guys not remember that in storyline we've been educated to believe that the authority could just fire you again whenever they want? You know? I mean, yeah. nothing. they didn't have to put you in a match to get you fired. They just fired you. You know, that's, that's the, way, the way that it is. And they look back, oh, we couldn't rob Roman Reigns of his spot if he did us. Well, in storyline, you've told us that you can fight anyone you want. That you have that that's much it. Power. Does it really matter? No. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, it's just the, the way it is, you know. Um, so, um, although if they got fired again, they might, they might miss, you know, four to five weeks of Raw, Hawk Shara, you know, the way it is. That's it. Uh, it could Seth... happen. Sorry, go on. It could happen. It could happen, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Just like, nope, longer. <laughs> God forbid they spend a month away from the show. Oh. They miss a pay-per-view. <laughs> too scary, too scary. Uh, Stephanie appears on the Titan Tron. She sets up a bunch of uh, matches, all involving the three returning guys. Um, and you know what? Do you know what Stephanie did here? She set up three matches in a space of around about a minute on the Titan Tron. And uh, that sounds like, to me, like a, an authority lightning round in terms of setting up matches. Bam, bam, bam. Take that. How quickly did she manage to do that? Yeah, it took them 25 minutes at the start of the show to set up one match. Jesus Christ. Two matches. <laughs> Come on. Come on, really. Come on. They set up two matches. All right, okay. We'll, we'll give them their the due. They set up two matches. Twenty-five minutes. But it was still took twenty-five minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you kind of get what I'm saying here. Come on. Right back against Luke Harper. That was the first match that started up. Um, a wrestling match on our sports entertainment show. Um, and like I said, I want to apologise to people um, of me sounding jaded when it comes to the first hour of the show, but. And maybe I'm in the minority. Maybe I am. But our show is called Let's Talk Wrestling. We like to talk about wrestling matches. And we didn't get really any semblance of a wrestling match until this match happened. So, um, God forbid, if I want to watch wrestling on the biggest 
wrestling say, which company one was, Which one was this? Oh, yeah, Ryback Harper. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, and I shouldn't have to watch over an hour of a show to... I mean, this is in about an hour and a half when this started. Um, of a match... Of, of, a, of, a, of a show to really get some good physical wrestling. I shouldn't have to watch that much of a show to get to that point. But we did. These two have a good, good, a good match, I thought. Um, Ryback gets the win. Yeah. And uh, it was quite a physical match the the pair of these guys had. And for what it's worth, uh, Ryback isn't exactly the most gifted guy in the ring. I think maybe he would be the first to admit that he's not at a level of like a Daniel Bryan or anything along those lines. But I do think that he and Harper could have a really good match if they were given a long time. I just yeah. The physicality. Of the thing it. is, it starts off. Like, I quite like the way it started off with a sort of, like, I suplex you, you suplex me sort of just one-upsmanship. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I think they could have a good match. I think Harper maybe doesn't get a lot of the credit that he deserves for being a guy that can carve out a good match. He's going yeah. to say, I like to call it the Bret Hart um, gene, you know, where you can have uh, great matches with a multitude of people. I think Luke Harper's got that in him a little bit. Um, Daniel, Bryan ha- Daniel Bryan has it in spades. You know, he can oh, have yeah. a great match if you're seven foot tall or four foot tall. If you're 500 pounds or 200 pounds, doesn't matter. He can have a great match with you. So, yeah, um, that leads us, uh, goes into Jimmy Uso against Cesaro. Cesaro. Um, two matches in a row. WWE was getting a little bit generous with us here on the show after this. And apparently there's controversy. Controversy, Matt. A scandal. <sighs> Are you ready for this scandal? Are you ready? No. For because Natalia set up a double date with Naomi and with their men feuding. What a scandal. What a scandal this was. No. What crazy... Oh. All the dirt sheets picked up on this like hot fire. Doesn't matter about CM Punk leaving the company. This double date is big news. I will Give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to make it as if a little bit more elaborate for you guys. Um, but seriously, why does that that have to be the reason why these guys are fighting this week it makes absolutely could it, yeah exactly could it not just be the fact that they're a tag team and they're the tag team champions yeah maybe they want to win the tag team titles maybe they want to be successful maybe that's the reason why these guys want to fight here but no apparently oh, it was heaven forbid apparently it's the double date drama you know um, that that's the reason why they're fighting regardless I thought we got a um, a decent enough match here uh, of course, yeah. Cesaro won with one hell of an uppercut. Kind of um, a little bit reminiscent of um, Shawn Michaels super kicking people coming off the top rope sort, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, good stuff. I mean, he absolutely laid out um, Jimmy Uso. Gets the victory. And you know what? It seems like uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd are being very fastly, fast, you know, fast-tracked to the title feud. Um, they haven't been around for over at least uh, over a month together as a team that's true yeah and they're already feuding for the belts i mean i know you and me are are big fans of tyson kidd and cesaro um whether or not our personal thoughts and whether or not i mean realistically my first thought was man they haven't been together that long and they've already been pushed towards the usos i mean you know is are they the right choice you know but then you look at the however i'm still thinking it's just like constantly we're just like whenever i think of um like tyson kidd and cesaro it's just like this current have you seen the, the the Brass Ring Club faction mm. that they've started up? Uh, that'll get changed. I and think. all I think is, Adam Rose! Yeah, apparently Adam Rose is a part of all that. That's just yeah. Bill that bollocks. Um, oh dear. But like, you know, one thing I'll say here, <clears throat> who else really do they have to feud for the belts? That tag team t- uh, that tag team pool is pretty thin, you know? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, you've got... Because essentially, like, you, you've had the Ascension and... Um, Golden Stardust feuding. Yeah, a little well, I, bit. Say, I say feuding. But like Golden and Stardust are going to break up. You know, they ain't going to be teaming together. Yeah. Um, the Usos don't really seem to have a feud with anyone going at the moment. The Ascension seems to be going on a different path. You know, they still need to establish themselves. Fair enough. Yep. Miz um, and Mizdow, no way. Miz and Mizdow are breaking up. You know, you can see the seeds of that this week. Um, so who do you have? You have Los Matadores. Do I want to see them? Not really. Um, heel tag teams. Los Matadores. I don't remember the last time I saw Los Matadores. Exactly, exactly. Um, and that's the reason why I think that um, a lot of the tag teams from NXT may be getting brought up quicker than essential. Then definitely quicker than the essential. But then this is the only problem. Like who in 
NXT a tag teams you say is ready to come up to Raw exactly. that work. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, th- I We said last week on the NXT review um, that we I, I said even then that their tag team pool is very shallow. Um, yeah. That you've got Sin Cara working constantly now on the main roster, you know, mostly as a jobber, but, you know, Sin Cara's been working more there, so that kind of leaves out what is he going to do in NXT. Um, and even then, even if you're going to count Kalisto and Sin Cara as part of that, I know they're going to, you know, have their title rematch at the, the the special next week. Yeah. But even if you count them in, who have you got? You've got Vaud Villains. You've got the tag champions. I don't champions. think Vaud Villains could work on Raw. That's... I don't think it could be a case. It doesn't work that well on NXT some weeks. Let's be honest. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an awkward thing. And I... Uh, it's sort of the, the tag team division kind of hit me a little bit by surprise just how worse off they are at the moment. Because I thought they were genuinely getting somewhere. Uh, about a year or two years ago I thought actually it's looking pretty good it's looking okay I'm um, looking like they're making some good strides and suddenly and then, no it, all these teams are just dissipating just just going out of the way and um, it will need some love that tag team division will need some love because at the moment it looks like there is no one really to contend with the Usos you yeah know? Um, I thought their biggest rivals they ever had um, were the Wyatt family, you know, Rowan and Harper, and they had some fantastic matches. But what happened soon after their rivalry? The Wyatt family are now no longer a tag team. Yeah. Um, and that damaged them as well. So, yeah, it's it's not, not in, a, in a great place at the moment, really. So backstage, Damien Mizdow is serving up some grub for the Miz. Uh, and then someone, uh, someone comes up, uh, one of the production crew, says he, he doesn't want Miz's autograph, he wants Mizdow's. <clears throat> who who would you rather have the autograph from? Miz it's got to be the Miz Dow autograph, yeah. isn't it? It's got to be Miz Dow. Got to be. Um, and then the Miz is, is incensed by this. He rips up the autograph. He says that Miz Dow is an arrogant jerk, and um, Miz uh, gives him a uh, Miz gave him a purpose, calls him ungrateful, and then he fires Miz Dow as his stunt double. So the worst part is, it's like you're fired, but I have another job for you. Yeah. But then, so. Not fired? Yeah, yeah. He's rehired as a personal assistant. So essentially, you know, he's fulfilling the Alex Riley role of uh, the Miz thing, you know, back when oh God, yeah. he was around. Um, and as you can say here, guys, we, we can see it coming for a while. It's coming. The blow off to the storyline will be around. And I don't think they'll get their match, um, get a singles match at WrestleMania. I think they'll probably have like, be like one of the last two guys in like the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal or something. If that goes ahead. If that goes ahead, yeah. And then Miz Dalby's the one to dunk him over. and you know, um, I see. I definitely see that happening. Um, yeah. But you know what? Let's just enjoy it. Let's um, look at it at this point. Like, we all know we've all accepted the fact that once it's all blown over, um, that Miz Dow more than likely won't have anything really to go from after this. That's it. It's, it's but, like, the Miz does mention that. It's like, what are you going to have afterwards? It's like, oh, no. Mm. Yeah. Don't don't raise that question. But Miz Dow is going to be he's going to make the most of this anyway. He's going to make this entertaining, and you have to at least take that at this point. That's it. But it is a little bit worrying that this that that's happening. Yeah. John Cena is met backstage by Eric Rowan. Rowan uh, says he's been treated like an animal, like an outcast, but no one has stuck up for him like Cena has. Rowan thanks him and says he'll face Rusev as a thanks to Cena. That that oh, Rowan now has compassion. <laughs> And then the Rowan match happens. Yeah. Oh. Like, the one, like the thing is, JBL mentions it very well. It's like, oh, he doesn't like being treated like an outcast or an animal. Why does he keep wearing a sheep mask <laughs> everywhere he goes? It could be part of it. <laughs> it's part of the point of it, yeah. Um, but it, it looked genuinely here in this in this small little backstage segment that Rowan was genuinely moved by John Cena. A changed man. Yeah. Uh, I would state here that it was serious sexual tension between the two. Uh, maybe Rowan likes Cena a bit too much. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Dolph Ziggler against Bray Wyatt next. Uh, a good a good lengthy match between these two. Mm, Very... A lot of time given. Mm, I like this. Um, a foreign concept, I know, of wrestling on a sports entertainment show, but we were given it here. Um, Wyatt, uh, you know, they, they two are, are, are fighting each other. It's a physical match and it's lengthy both getting giving good account of themselves as you would expect that white and ziggler would be able to pull off a good match and they do um why gets to victory he no sells a famouser and then uses sister, sister abigail to um to slam ziggler and get the win 
Yep. Uh, and this all leads up to uh, what is the rumours of, and we'll talk about this later on during his promo, of a Wyatt versus Undertaker match. And I'm going to explain why I don't believe a Wyatt versus Undertaker match should be made. And I'll uh, go into that. I know I spoke to you a little bit about it. I know you disagree to a certain extent, but we'll get into that as we, as we go on. I know. I, I understand your point. I'm just doing it. I'm just like, I don't care who wins or loses. I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. But we get into our thoughts of it there once we do his promo because it eluded a lot more during his promo what he was going to be doing there. No, definitely. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that leads us into uh, a backstage segment here with uh, with Seth Rollins, with with Triple H and Stephanie as well. Uh, he says he's all happy. He's all happy about costing Roman Reigns his match earlier on in the night, uh, but he is a little bit worried about Daniel Bryan getting a shot at the uh, you know at, at the main event again at WrestleMania. Triple H and Stephanie, uh, Stephanie said that they're confident in him and that he's a better face of the company than Randy Orton ever could be. And you could hear the uh, the um, creative here just going, OK, we now have to reference Randy Orton. We know that Rollins will be facing Orton at Mania. It's pretty much, you know, the only match really that's available. It's for definitely him. one of those who are just like rubbing hands together, just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They reference it's happening. Him. Yeah. Orton, Orton was referenced a lot here. I do expect him to be returning either at Fastlane or sometime around that. I yeah. think Fastlane will probably be the late, the the latest that he really will be getting involved. All things considered, you have to do a build up to that match. You know, I know there's That's history it. behind them, but... rather than just not like next week Mania happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, they're just setting up the small seeds here of Rollins against Orton, and uh, yeah, that match is definitely going ahead. To like I said, honestly, I don't see any other match really that the either of these guys can have at Mania at this yeah. point. So. Paige versus Alicia Fox. The Bellas are at ringside. And one thing that you have to give props to Nikki Bella. Uh, she got a boob job, but I'll tell you what, she makes the most of it. If you watch Total Divas, she makes the most of said boob job, you know, with the clothes that she wears and everything like that. She flaunts those puppies every chance she gets. <laughs> I'm sure um, she she does it. On a, uh, I'm sure she'll be able to do it a lot more without, the, you know, the king at uh, commentary, you know. Um, I saw one thing and it was just like, I'm so glad of the body that God gave me. And this is sort of like God and the surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, uh, and, uh, and two large pieces of silicon. But let's not get into, into that now. Uh, one thing I got annoyed about, and I know that you will get as well. You must have got frustrated as well. Apparently, Paige's skin color is something worth feuding about. And they're still going along with this. Oh, you're so pasty white. You must be a vampire. Oh, apparently all British people... Yeah, like they didn't mention the ghost, didn't they? Yeah. Um, After Paige came along and just sort of screamed in their face. Yeah, it's just a little bit ridiculous to me. I, I thought they... To be honest, they could have got over this by now, but they see... Luckily, now we don't have the king each week going, oh, look how pale she is. She must have, uh, you know, been from the other side of the moon or anything like that. You know, just all these bad sort of puns and stuff, all this crap about it. Come on, you know, that, that card has been played a little bit to death. That card was played to death before Paige got to the company. You know, with Seamus being yeah, around. Thanks to Seamus. Yeah. Um, I get it. We don't have a lot of sun over here. Ha ha ha. Laugh it up. Uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know what was cool here? My recording skipped the Divas match. I didn't have, I can't, I haven't watched it this week. I oh, yeah. So did, like, did you get a, uh, there's a Sky Sports, like, system problem yeah. or something like yeah. that. I was like, yay! <laughs> I wasn't able to I'm watch it. I'm free! It was, that, that was pretty cool. I like that. So, can't review it this week. And, it, you know, I feel like the wrestling gods were throwing me a bone. They're like, don't worry. I know it's been a bad show overall, guy, uh, Tony. You've had some good matches. I know that the, the, you know, the start of the show was bad. Let's just, we will skip this for you. You know, we just won't let you watch it. And I was like, well, I'm up for that. That's okay with me. Uh, they show The Miz appearing on the TV show Sirens. The only thing I can say about it is that I won't go out of my way to watch it. I don't know what the show is, and by the looks of it, I'm not going to waste my time. Um, I'm not a big show watcher anyway, which is ironic because we do a podcast on a weekly telev- television show, but yeah. um, still. Uh, the Miz then has a match with Sin Cara, and um, throughout this match, Miz is... Who, 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 who stands, who's, uh, what's Spanish for? Uh, apparently it's Spanish for everything. Everyone wants to put their Yeah. Um, I think and, that... and you're eliminated. Yeah. And I think quite a few other things. Yeah. I've, I've actually got the answer. I've actually got what it, what it means. Do you want to know what Sin Cara actually means? Go ahead. It means jobber. Ah. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. See, it, sin, sin means means jobber and Cara means botch. 
Jobber botch. Jobber botch. That's his Jesus. name. Jesus. Jobber botch. And he botched jobbing this week because he won. Woo! Takes a special kind of botcher to to botch jobbing. You know. Jesus. Jesus. Wow. Uh, the funniest part of this this match was actually was a lot longer than I think it had any, much right to be because uh, the major, majority of the time they were just focusing on Mizdow fighting his carnal urge like, to must out. must get involved must must act out Mrs. Moves uh, or maybe you know he was just standing there taking a tirade of abuse from Vacant and he was unable to do anything to battle him that's that's, that's what it. I like to believe anyway um, so yeah the entire match was pretty much for Sandow's benefit and the reactions that he gets for just standing literally on the spot looking around was pretty pretty great it's pretty awesome uh, he inadvertently distracts the Miz after uh, you know breaking his uh, his um promise and acting out what the Miz is doing and then this gives uh, Sin Cara the chance for the victory which he which he does take yep. um, and uh, he gets the first victory on the main roster for what seems like God knows how long it just seems like months since he's even been on the roster let alone got a win <laughs> yeah. so there we are um, and as I said all along Sin Cara stands for job of watch because he was meant to job here obviously and then he just you know botched that That's the way it is uh, that power of that mask by the way Jesus the, the, just crazy yeah wow um so here we go backstage bray wyatt is teasing a promo about uh essentially teasing a rivalry with the undertaker he says that he's been watching someone for a while and how people used to fear him and now they love and, and admire him but bray wyatt is the new face of fear he is the new dragon he ends the promo by saying find me i thought the promo was good I have to say before I get into it. However, I don't think that a Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker match should happen. And I'll explain why. And you can explain if you like why I'm wrong. Um, I believe that if you've got Sting and The Undertaker on the same card, they should be against each other. And I don't think there should be anything other... I was fine with Sting against Triple H if Undertaker wasn't coming back to do a match. If he is coming back to do a match, there is absolutely no excuse why they can't give at the very last juncture of both of these men's careers, the dream match that would never happen. They have to do it. Yeah, they have to do Sting against Taker. They obviously aren't going to, right? Well, I know that now, right? Um, but if The Undertaker is coming back and resting Bray Wyatt, there is no reason for them not to have a Sting versus Undertaker match. Regardless of that, okay? You may be thinking, but Tony, you want Bray Wyatt to be a big star. You want him to wrestle big names and you want him to get over with the fans considering 2014 was a shit year for him. Then I'd argue wrestling The Undertaker wouldn't help with that. Because I guarantee you Undertaker ain't losing two WrestleManias in a row. Especially if it might be his last. So you've got, in addition to the fact that you're going to have Sting and Undertaker on the same card not wrestling each other. Which I think is a massive misstep. Doesn't matter about the quality of the match. Fans want it. It's a dream match, right? They want it. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the fact as well that, okay, you might be throwing a dog, or you might be throwing a bone to a young dog. I'd argue it's not really doing that. You're feeding, technically, a young dog to the el- to the big, to the elder. To the old dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and people, you know, may be thinking, maybe going crazy, thinking, oh, but it's Undertaker against him. It's going to be awesome. Even if he loses, it's going to be great. It's still the same as him going against John Cena, guys. He's still losing the match. Still doesn't do anything for Bray Wyatt. It just makes makes Bray Wyatt look as if, oh, I get in a rivalry. I can't win rivalries against big stars. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. I, I had a rivalry with John Cena. Couldn't win it. Um, I'm going to have a rivalry now with The Undertaker. Can't win it. What does that do for Bray Wyatt? It just makes him look like a loser and sure the promos and the rivalry itself may be entertaining i just i can't get around the fact that those two big points are the reasons why i don't want to see a bray wyatt undertaker match yeah at this year's wrestlemania so go on explain to me why you are excited for it i am excited for it just simply in a fan mentality okay just simply because i think we could get some amazing work out of the pair of them regarding promos cuts and things like that Okay, so you so the excitement for why Undertaker match overrules the Sting Undertaker, and you know even if oh I would I, I, yeah I mean I would probably much rather find a see a Sting Taker match, but I think we're getting two. I think Triple H and Sting Wyatt Taker is better than if we had Sting Taker Triple H Wyatt. 
it doesn't I know I know what you're getting there. It's almost like from two big stars you get two big matches. I get what you mean. Um But I do I do understand like the whole it's the two sort of the two dead men of the like each frat, each company. I would love to see a Sting take a match. I would. Yeah. But if this is the way that they're going, I'm not upset with it. I am, personally. Because you want Sting Taker. Uh, I, I just don't think... I think that eventually when it's all said and done and fans wonder why there was never a Sting Taker match, they've had, an, they've had an excuse all the way through. Sting was never on their books. Sting was never on their books. You know, Sting never wanted to come to the company. They, they couldn't come to terms. The only thing that's stopping a Sting versus Undertaker match, if Undertaker is wrestling at this show... Is WWE? They're not giving the fans a dream match. That's my issue with that. Um, even, and I like I said, I'd be fan even if Undertaker, um, you know, is does it is, even if he hasn't, maybe he wrestles next year's WrestleMania. It wasn't his last match. I'd still be okay with that because Undertaker's body's not ready for a match at WrestleMania. So fair enough. Sting is. Yeah. He has to have his match. I've got no issue with that. But if they're wrestling on the same show, there is nothing to stop the pair of them from from having that match. And okay. I think WWE are missing a huge thing by not giving fans technically what they've always wanted for almost 20 years. And yeah. it, it doesn't even have to be a great match. It doesn't. You know? It just has yeah, it to. Does. Those, no, I'd, I'd argue it doesn't even have to be good. I'd argue that the... It's got to be at least a subpar match. It can't be a terrible match. No. Otherwise, they'd just be like, oh, all of that for nothing. But I'd argue that The Rock against Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18 was not a good match. I'd argue to anyone, technically, it was a bad match. However, people looking at it as if it was one of the greatest things they've ever seen. I'd argue it'd be the same with, with Taker and Sting. They don't have to go out there and put on a showcase for 20 minutes. No, that's not required of them. They half their job would be done just standing in the ring looking at each other at WrestleMania and watching the fans go ballistic. Hell, yeah, that'd be enough for a this is awesome charm. Yeah, that's what I'd state here. So if they are going with this, and like I said, it doesn't help Bray Wyatt before people say, "Oh, it's going to help Bray Wyatt." It won't help Bray Wyatt because um, I I know that that Vince would want to reward Taker for doing the good thing last year and winning, you know, losing the way he did and losing the streak, yep. and he'll want Taker to to end his career with a victory and ride off into the sunset, whatever. And if Bray Wyatt is the guy that gets that done against him, that doesn't do anything good for Bray Wyatt. There we are. Uh, moving forward from that, and that will be a... St- I, in fact, I, I imagine that our fans have got a few things to say about why, a possibility of Wyatt against Taker. And we'll definitely see... You know, maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe it does. We'll see. We'll see. Rusev against Eric Rowan, as we were saying earlier on. Uh, Rowan wanted to, ha- you know, wants to... You know, do something for John Cena. You know, As a thank to... you, John, I will fight Rusev. Okay, cool. Have fun with that. Yeah, he essentially gets demolished in a matter of seconds. Um, he gets. Well, I say, here's the thing: he doesn't get battered in a matter of seconds. He's beaten in a matter in a matter of seconds. But the beating he takes is actually fairly lengthy. He gets thrown against the ring post. He gets battered. He gets put the accolade on him. Uh, all the while, by the way, that you must be thinking, and you, this is a, quite a few minutes that go while Rusev is illegally attacking Rowan. The match never starts, right? Yep. He jumps him, right? You think maybe the guy that Rowan wanted to do this for, and you know, a guy that he that you know that has a vested interest in what Rusev's doing at the moment, would maybe want to come out and maybe I don't know, save his friend from getting attacked. Yeah. There may be something that, you know, the big paragon of good of WWE might want to do. At least maybe actually sort of help to continue, like, oh, Cena's fighting Rusev. Maybe if Cena comes out to make the save. Well, it's not even that. They've obviously act- actively... This the whole goes along with the things that Cena just doesn't come out to help his friends. You know, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that WWE don't... They don't, I don't think they necessarily try to book it that way. But it does come off that Cena just doesn't give a shit. He's just like, ah, that's it. Attacks. I'm fine back here. Ah, uh, you're getting beaten up. And you know what? I'm just sitting here with my arm around Nikki Bella and just... <laughs> just enjoying life right now. Yeah, just like yeah. counting all my money. <laughs> uh, so yeah, afterwards, um, Lana then spouts a bit of exposition saying that... Um, Oh, there's a new film coming out, and it's going to be at the, you know, considering the Academy Awards. Yeah, it's Oscar week or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so Rusev's got this video. They they run a cool video package for Rusev. It's probably the best one they've done of him, actually. It's a bit short, but I thought it was pretty good. The way they it got the point across. Yeah, it did. You know. Uh, mm-hmm. And if, the thing is, though, I mean, a lot of people are going to be, oh, they're getting excited. John Cena is going to be the one that eventually gets to pay off all this, and he doesn't need the pay off for it. It's a bit sad, really. They could have given that to Ryback. 
all things considered, but a bit of a shame. Um, so after after all this, by the way, getting Rusev over, um, John Cena yet again nowhere to be found. Doesn't make any statement. The Russian flag gets caught up in, you know, normally it, it pops from the thing and it hangs down. It drapes ever so nicely, yeah. yeah. And uh, I have to give props to Rusev and to some um, extent the um, the commentators here because if this was if this was planned, then I, I they, don't think it, they, I don't... they played stupid very well. Yeah, they did. And if it wasn't planned, then they reacted very well because Rusev was incensed. He was freaking out. He grabbed the flag from the outside, started waving that instead. Um, and, you know, the commentator was like, oh, I wonder if John Cena was behind us and stuff. If this was off the cuff, then I think they, they saved it pretty well, I have to say. I thought they did all right. Reigns and Brian backstage. Um, Brian says that Reigns' revenge will have to wait as it will be Brian facing Reigns at, at fast lane. Reigns says he doesn't care who wins as he'll beat them. And he tells Brian to get the hell out of his locker room. You see? Yeah. An ass kicker, guys. Not hard. Did did he say anything about about fairy tales and magic beans here? No. He just just just, no. just, he just go. did did what he needed to do. We we present to you exhibit A, ass kicker Roman Reigns. This works. This is acceptable. We will enjoy watching him in this fashion. Uh, hopefully they continue going along these lines in regards to Reigns because god damn it I was enough. especially considering it's not even like ass kicker it's like that's almost that's heel yeah a little bit but you know what he's pissed off you know and they're selling over the fact that doesn't matter if you're Daniel Bryan you've got the fans behind you Roman Reigns is going to Wrestlemania and he's going to go along those lines the fact is that maybe Reigns needs to be a little bit of an asshole for people to actually get behind him you know Uh, maybe he does need to be a little bit of a dick for people not to think that he's not John Cena 2.0. And I would argue that adding some of these things, maybe he just doesn't have time for other faces. Maybe he, you know, all, all this stuff, uh, suffering succotash, son, just needs to get taken the hell out of his character. Make him a, an ass kicker. That's what we've always said along. It's not hard to book Roman Reigns. It's actually That's very it. easy. Do you know what I noticed, though, actually, with Roman Reigns? It was right at the beginning mm. when they were all in the ring. And I was like... Rollins isn't that much smaller than Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very tall guy, Rollins, isn't he? He's just, it's uh... not even that. Like, Rollins, like, either, like, Reigns has, like, lost some bulk or, like, Rollins has found the lost bulk. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, you're not actually too different in size, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe that's just Rollins looking like a main event Mac Daddy in there. That's you know, probably you know, it. That's it. That's where it is. Uh, this leads to Rollins versus Bryant. Man, this show got better as it went on, and it peaked at the end of this show. Can I just say it, guys? Humdinger of a match, this one. Oh, wasn't it just... Oh, yes. And I have missed Daniel Bryan a lot when it comes to this show, because the sheer level of base wrestling... I mean, the very beginning of this match, some of the chain wrestling they did, I was like, oh, this this is my... I haven't seen state. stuff like that in ages. Oh, this is good. I like this. This is awesome. Uh, a real main event caliber match and a match that I would honestly state overall on this Raw, you would do very well just skipping the first half of it and watching the second half. I guarantee you guys will think this is a very, very good episode of Raw. But that first hour just... Ugh, it, ugh, it just Failed stinks. It. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and you know, all the talk that we said on this show, you know, of Brian won't be bumping that harder now, now, nowadays and we expect him to be changing up his wrestling style, which he has a little bit, I have noticed. But in terms of bumping, he punched his bump card here um, pretty well, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, just a bit. He took a few big hits on this one and, you know, fair enough, he was selling the, the shoulder, you know, his neck. Um, fair play. That's, that's Is that, it was that top rope um, sort of belly-to-back suplex. I was just like, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. It was like, good. That, that I like the fact that that they're still selling the fact that, you know, it's very public, the fact that his neck was an issue. Everyone knows it by now. Yeah. Why not keep selling it that it's still an issue? And it's just, that's just booking 101 when it comes to injuries, you know. Um, Dean Ambrose seemed, seemed to forget that recently, you know, just getting decimated. No, oh, I'm jumping out. He's doing the John Cena thing. At least yeah. here with, with uh, Daniel Bryan, they're referencing a lot. Oh, you know, that that is his surgically repaired neck, you know, and they used to do that with Austin all the time whenever he used to clutch his, his neck. JR used to be like, oh no, his surgically repaired neck. He, he might not be able to continue with this match. It builds up to the drama of it a little bit more. So, um, yeah, it's good. Uh, the 
match, as I said, is excellent. It's easily match of the week. Uh, by far. By far. Uh, Roman well, I don't Reigns... know. I can't call it match of the week because I haven't seen NXT yet. Oh, and I would say it's... I thought this match was better than Atami and Balor, personally. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, so... As uh, going on, Big Show is, is, is on the outside. He looks like he's about to get involved. Roman Reigns makes an appearance. And I'd argue to people that he... It seemed as if here, when he speared the Big Show, it seemed as if he jumped from the goddamn Titantron and he flew down the thing missile at speed. to him, yeah. Yeah, he, man, that, this was one hell of a spear. Probably one of the best ones he's done, even though he hit him kind of on the chest, but still... Um, he looked like he's not. He looked like he flew here, um, and he, yeah, he, he reigns here was pretty cool. He was he was just dealing with everyone. You know, he, he attacked J and J security. Um, he speared the shit out of um, I can't remember was it Mercury or Noble. He speared the living crap. Uh, out of I think it was, it was Noble. Yeah, he just decimated him. Um, and then he threw in um, Rollins back to the slaughter, and there's Daniel Bryan waiting with the flying knee to get the victory. Uh, I thought Reigns here was excellent. I thought the way he was worked at the end of this. Do you know why? He was an ass kicker. There That's we it. go. He did what he needed to do. Did he hop down there with his with his fairy tale book and spout out loads of exposition about how he's? A... Are you sitting comfortably? Yeah. Then we'll begin. Yeah. Once upon a time, there was a Roman Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not get into that, Matt. Let's not get into that. Um, uh, you know what we should do? Once we should make a, a shirt, and it should be just like a book cover for Roman Reigns fairy tales. You know, just like <laughs> something along those lines. Um, Brian, after the match, says that um, he's going to go on, beat Roman Reigns, and he's going to main event WrestleMania again. I thought it was a very good way to end this show, considering how bad it started. Um, and we are going to get Roman Reigns against Daniel Bryan. I guarantee you, regardless, we're not going to talk about fan response yet, because I want to leave it a little bit further up, going up towards the event, and have different crowds. But I guarantee you that, at very least... No matter how the fans will react to Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan will give him the best match of Roman Reigns' career. Uh, yeah. At Fastlane. Oh, and if he, anything, he he will drag it out. Yeah. He. Oh, believe me. When I say that Daniel Bryan has got Bret Hart in him, he's got a, he's got that Bret Hart gene. Doesn't matter. I mean, Roman Reigns isn't a bad wrestler. People give him a lot of stick that he's maybe too formulaic, but he will. Dan, Daniel Bryan has a knack of pulling out. World class matches with no matter who he's in the ring with. Yeah. I imagine he looks at Roman Reigns and says, "I can do something with that. I That's can it. get a good match out of that." Do you know one thing actually with this main event? Considering when we when I was over, we were talking like, "Oh, just remember back with Ring of Honor." And we mentioned Brian Danielson versus Tyler Black, and so yeah. he's like, oh, "That was our main event, and it was amazing." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and that's something that they get from signing previous indie stars, that they get this sort of style of excellence about them, that they have yeah. something a little bit extra to be able to offer. Um, that so, the likes of a John Cena. Um, John Cena's a good wrestler when he when he gets given the moments to, but I'd argue that he, and people give give him, him a lot of stick for it, that when it comes to the, to the chips, to be able to offer something different, yeah. he runs out of ideas a little bit, John. Uh, the rest of them, however, when you've got indie stars the likes of Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins, and you know the guys down there, uh, Sami Zayn, uh, Finn oh. Balor, Hideo Tami, they Neville. have got yeah. they their playbook is like a fucking massive compilation. They've got so much they can use. Well, this is like I'm, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before on this podcast, and I know I've definitely said this to you. Is mm. um, Sami Zayn has turned around and said that he has more in ring experience than Cena. It's just that Cena's been in the WWE longer. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? For a majority of time, considering the amount of time that they have for matches, you won't see that difference actually that that often. You know, the fact that Sami Zayn does know more about wrestling than John Cena. Yeah. Um, but when it comes down to these very l- lengthy matches um, where you need something a little bit extra, a little bit special to really make that match something hugely memorable, John Cena doesn't have as many cards to play as a Sami Zayn, yeah. Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins. That's just the way it is, you know. That's it. So, that's it. Uh so yeah, all in all, when I have to review the show, I would I would state that anyone who wants to watch this show just skip the first hour and a half. It's bad. Yeah, definitely. First hour and a half is shockingly poor. Really, really bad. I mean, we've 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 reviewed some raws and said that oh, overall it's pretty bad. I'd it's... sort of take I'd sort of go as far as just like 
once you found Wyatt Ziggler, yeah, then everything starts to they carry on from there. Yeah, Um, (laughs) it's ironic then. Once you get Ziggler coming into the show, things just start to improve. You know, yeah, Um, Ziggler's the the uh, the turning point. Yeah, yeah. Um, But you know, it is what it is. I'd argue that um, guys, if you really want to catch this show. Just catch the last hour and a half. The last hour and a half, I thought, was very competent, very good. Mm. But you have to review it as a as a, as a whole. Uh, I review it as as a um, a show of two halves, and that way you kind of have to state it's at least, you know, what's really really bad, and then you've got really really good. It makes a mediocre show overall. But it's I don't like saying that. I don't like making calling this show mediocre when you've got match as good as Rollins versus Brian on it. It's. Yeah, yeah. I don't like calling it. So I kind of explain it. Is it worth catching? Yes. Unfortunately, you're going to wait for a lot of crap to get. To <laughs> yeah. Really good it's 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 worth catching once you get there. Yeah, once you get there. Like uh, at the very least, once you've got through all the crap, it's pretty much good after good after good after good after that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. There, there is that. Um. So yeah, that is the the show for this week. Have you got anything else to cover? Um, from Raw at all? Anything else you want to? No. Um, no. We've been chatting almost over two hours now, so... No, I can't think of anything. That's cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the show this week, you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the show. I'm hungry after all that talking. I need to <laughs> Like, ah, uh, so next week I shall in fact go and feed me more. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so. Yeah, next week, just a little bit of a, a precursor to what we're going to be doing. We will be reviewing NXT as a um, an extra next week. Yeah, um, on my birthday. On your birthday, yeah. That's going to be cool. Uh, and yeah, we will be reviewing that. It won't, I, I don't think it'll be an extra. It will just be on top of the regular show. So. You sure? I don't know. We've what done do it. We've done extras. We've done extras for um, NXT before. Yeah, but we did them with other pay-per-views, didn't we? Yeah. I tell you what, should we let, should we leave it down to the fans if they want a solo NXT review? Of the I think it's going to become a solo NXT one, but yeah, why not? Yeah, come on guys, let, let us know what you think in regards to that. Um, and if you did enjoy this episode, then you know we we love all the support you've done. But if you can like it and subscribe, if you're new, join us. Um, just a, a while ago, we were like, wow, we broke 200 subscribers. Now we're over, we're almost 220, and that was only like a week ago. So yeah. that's like pretty awesome that we we're growing at the rate we are now. It's kind of crazy uh, yeah that's it and if you want to ask any questions it won't last for much longer we're going to eventually start to pick them picking them out so now is the time to start leaving your questions and that way you'll guarantee you at very least next week we will definitely answer all the questions that, that's on there yeah um, before, before the selection comes in yeah because we're starting to I mean it's great we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of you know a lot of people coming into the show and asking questions we always love our answering them. Um, but we don't want to be like you know doing three hour shows. I mean, our fan feedback's taken up about forty five minutes. We don't want to be as long as Raw. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, as I said, just uh, the final plug there as well. As I said at the start of the show, we did do a Q and A session over at uh, Wrestling Boom, uh, uh, Wrestling Boom podcast. So uh, there is a link to that in the description. And the, uh, and oh, that is that is up now. The first half of it is up, as far as I know. Um, the second half of it is. So go catch us, catch us there, you can find out stuff, you can catch the uh, Apart from that, guys, uh, Matt needs to get rid of his hiccups, so we'll be right out of here. Uh, Picked up on that one, damn I it. Did, I did, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, we hope you guys have a great week, we hope you do enjoy the NXT special, I'm pretty much sure that everyone will. Uh, and apart from that, we will catch you on the flip side. Uh, I will see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when that was coming. Alright, guys, <laughs> bye-bye. See you soon.